BBC News. Elon Musk has said he sacked half of Twitter's global workforce because it was losing more than $4 million a day. The world's richest man bought the social media platform last week. Addressing concerns about the spread of hate speech, he said Twitter's commitment to content moderation remained unchanged. Humanitarian workers in Kenya say a severe drought is forcing large numbers of children to drop out of school to help their families get food and water. Care International says that in one area, almost half of pupils were regularly absent. The United States and Canada have imposed sanctions on two senior Haitian politicians, accusing them of links with criminal gangs and large-scale drug trafficking. Joseph Lambert and Yuri Latortu will be banned from entering both countries and have local assets seized. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan has accused his successor, Shabazz Sharif, of being involved in a plot to assassinate him. Mr Khan was speaking from the hospital where he's being treated. The Pakistani government has dismissed the claims. Protesters belonging to an indigenous community in Peru have released around 150 tourists who they'd been holding since Thursday. The Cuninico community was demanding more help from the Peruvian government after a huge oil spill in September. Donald Trump's former strategist Steve Bannon has formally appealed against his conviction for contempt of Congress. Bannon was sentenced to four months in prison for refusing to comply with a probe into the storming of the US Capitol in January last year by Trump supporters. Officials in South Korea say two miners trapped for more than nine days in a collapsed mine have walked out alive. The pair had been stuck in a vertical shaft nearly 200 metres underground. They are reported to have pitched a tent using plastic sheeting and made a fire inside the shaft to keep warm. The men survived on instant coffee powder and water. South Korea's president and called the miners' return miraculous. BBC News.